Good morning everyone, it's Laxor again with another Q&A dev stream with our great friend EHG Mike over here playing another great build, the Serpent Strike Primal List, which is pretty bad, but they like bad builds on these streams. Um, yeah, bunch of interesting topics this time. Um, again, pretty much every week there is something very neat. Also two more leaks, up, it's two, two more leaks for upcoming things in 1.1 and generally just a little bit of talk about... Um, What's actually happening? First of all, because he answered it, I'm, I'm not showing the exact thing. He said, because people ask, when will 1.1 actually come? Come out, the next cycle, right? And he said always, as he always said, three to four months from the last one, right? Which was 1.0 in February. And then he also said, though, it won't, like, this will be between end of May to end of June-ish, right? If we do the math. But he said he thinks it's more like the latter because if it were end of May, they would already be hyping it up and having trailers out and whatnot. So this is your confirmation. 1.1 is going to come in June, probably even towards the end of June. So they're probably maxing out the four months for their first cycle, which is understandable. They're getting in the flow. So I, I didn't expect this to come out soon so just so you have an idea i guess somewhere in the beginning of june some some trailers and leaks and whatever will be coming for the new season the new cycle and then towards the end of june we'll be able to play it but now let's get into what he actually has to say uh do you have set plans for the next coming cycles how far out would you say you have cycles planned at the moment um i know the like ten pole features of 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. I know likely the ten point, the tent pole features of 1.4 as well. Um, and you know things things shift and change as we go, but uh, the majority of stuff is pretty pretty well planned for those. We're, we're like we're now we're now in this like we're planning um, this like rolling cycle content. We're 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 designing and developing like art assets out out ahead of time that sort of stuff. Um, like we're 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 into this like long-term development cycle rolling process now. I find this to be great um, because it's very important that a company has long-term vision. So even though they are an indie company, right, a small company, they're really doing all the things right with their first, very first game. Um, planning out like four cycles ahead to 1.4, maybe even a little bit into 1.5, which is like four cycles, right? Um, which is next year, right? Yeah, that's in the middle of next year, I think. So it's a whole year, pretty much. They're planning ahead already on content, what they will release, will be releasing. So that's just great to hear. I just wanted to add this because this gives a lot of confirmation and reassurance that they are doing things right with the game and um, things are going in the right direction. Uh, how does corruption affect the drop rate of legendary potential? Uh, I mean, in the different from 100 to 1,000 corruption, something like 10%, 5%, how can we imagine it? Um, I, I don't know what the number is off the top of my head. I'm sorry. I don't know if we've ever actually released the full number. Um, I think. It is not super duper significant. Um, I don't think there's any person who's got to a high enough corruption where it's like double. Um, I, don't, I don't know what the number is. I'm sorry. It's not a linear relationship either. So this is very interesting. I'm going to give you some more info, which comes later, but it's just all to do with corruption. But um, I found this to be interesting. He said there was not a single person who doubled their chances of rarities for items by getting high into corruption. That means even if you go from zero to 2000 corruption, because people have achieved that, or even 3k I've seen people achieve, they did not double their chances on item rarity. And he will explain later why that is. And this, again, bolsters my belief and my thoughts, even though people gave me shit for it, that going for high corruption is absolutely pointless. <laughs> and I will show you why in a second. More questions. What do you say to people who claim there's no point in pushing past 250 corruption? How different is the drop rate actually the deeper you go? Um, I mean, there is a... Uh, reduced like the, there's a you get less increase to your drop rate as you go higher and higher in corruption so like 
the difference in drop rate between corruption 100 and 200 is a bigger jumping uh, drop rate than between uh, 1000 and 1100. I think that if you're ref there, there was a uh, a post that went out a few weeks ago that got a lot of attention um, that tried to um, highlight the, the the differences in drop rate based on corruption that had some uh, issues in methodology for the experiment uh, that were um, un uncovered in the comments section. But unfortunately, most, uh, most of the information gets pulled from the main post, not the comment section. The game's not designed to be played at four-digit corruption, so we don't expect people to go that high. So we don't... Um, there, there is less of an incentive to get that high based on drop rate numbers. Like there's and there's no, um, nothing nothing unlocks at that point. Like so, at 300 corruption, I think is the last point that like something unlocks. I think it's 300. It might only be 200 actually. I think it's 300 though. Um, so like there's a there's a there's a tangible like break point that happens at 300. For specific things unlocking, it is a smooth curve for increased item rate. Uh, when you mean the loot increases less as you go higher in corruption, do you mean only relatively, or is the total amount of extra drops from two to two fifty less than one to one fifty as well? Let, let's 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 just let's assign some hypothetical numbers here that I that I am extremely confident are wrong, but let's just let's just put some numbers to this just to make it easier to talk about. So let's say hypothetically that going from one to one fifty, let's just say it's it's at that point it's a percent per. So going from one to one fifty was a hundred percent increased rarity or fifty percent increased rarity. Sorry. Um, like the difference was fifty percent increased rarity between the two, but then two to two fifty maybe it was only. 25% increased rarity difference between the two. So the 50 points of corruption between 100 and 150 were twice as valuable as the 50 points of corruption between 2 and 250. Um, just to be clear again, that is not how it actually works. Um, those are the wrong numbers, but we're just using those numbers to illustrate the point I was trying to make. Um, the all right, so there was a lot in this, but I wanted to have him put out these thoughts all together. But there it is, gentlemen. He actually finally said it in clean English because people have been speculating and calling me out and all that. Going to very high corruption is pointless. And the reason is, as he said, like if you want to go for item drops, right? Item rarity drops, then it is pointless. Because as he said, the higher you go in corruption, this, the less the increase in item rarity becomes. So there's sort of a... So the curve goes slower even more over time. Meaning, as he said, if you go from 100 to 150 corruption, you have, for example, a 50% increase. The number is wrong, but you get the idea. If you go from 200 to 250 corruption, it's only 25%. If then would go from 300 to 350, it goes down to probably like 12.5%. So the higher you go, the harder you push in corruption, the lesser increase in your item rarity drops you gain and he said before even that there is n the game is designed around 300 corruption max okay gonna say this again in clean english the game is designed around 300 corruption max so can people please stop coming at me <laughs> and at him or anyone really saying that if your build doesn't go to 1000 corruption, it sucks. No, it's already good if you can do 200 corruption, then you have a good build, okay? And actually he was kind of wrong there. The last thing that unlocks is at 200 corruption. That is the Omnis amulet. That's the last one you get from Orobis. You have to have at least 200 corruption before this unlocks at all. And there is nothing at 300, but prophecies go up to 300, 330 corruption, I believe at the max. But ne never am any higher than that. But it's still interesting. He said many times before, any build that can go to 1000 or 4-digit corruption is using a bug. 
or a or something that isn't wasn't intended. So this is not intended to happen at all, even though it's possible. There is something wrong with the interactions. The game is balanced around freedom and corruption, and your build is good at 100, 200 corruption already. Empowered monoliths is already good if your build can do it. The reason so many builds can do it right now is because the balancing is off. Okay, They didn't know that people would figure this out that fast, I guess. Or they just weren't aware of the uh, wrong interactions. So also, again, with 1.1 coming, where many of these things will be addressed, maybe not all of them, but there are balance changings, changes coming, you will most likely not be able to go to 500, 600, 700 corruption with any of your builds. Because 300 is sort of the maxed out idea. Sure, there will be some that can go higher. Um, and maybe there will be another bug, bug interaction or something that someone finds out something that wasn't intended and you can still go to 2k. Sure, that will be happening, but again, it's not intended. So again, you can go if like, if you want to test your build, you want to test yourself, you want to see how far can I actually push. This is great. And this is also why he said that they don't put a limit to corruption, right? They, they want to have it in there. They even talked internally about putting a limit on uh, max corruption, but they said, no, if people want to push as far as they can go, why not? So as sort of a personal, if you want to, if you have a competitive spirit and you just want to see how far can I actually push it, fine, do it, go to a super high corruption. But for the casual players, the majority of people, which is what the game is balanced around, which is a healthy decision for a company to make, because these are the people that actually drive your game. Then for them, it's 300 max. And I think personally, most casual players will likely not ever even go to 300 corruption. Most people, I mean, if they change the, the non-empowered monoliths, which they said they will change, that you, you can get to empowered faster. Um, most people will probably go to empowered monoliths, maybe even fight Shade of Orbis a bunch of times. So you go to like 120, 140, 150 maybe, but then they couldn't be bothered. The Omnis Amulet is cool, but most people will probably not farm for it. And I said, this is most casual players, right? Your Diablo 4 kind of style, uh, or the Path of Exile people that just play through the campaign and do a bunch of maps and that's it. That's most people, all right? Get out of here with this statement that most ARPG players are the ones grinding to 2000 corruption easily all day. That's not most players. <laughs> that's a bunch, and that's cool. If you're that, that kind of person, cool, go with it, all fine. But this is not how the game is played by most people. Okay, I think my rant is over here. I think this all also puts an end to this discussion about corruption finally. 300 is your sweet spot. This is where you have the best item drops. Um, or like you get the best for your buck. You don't have to push any higher. You still get super good drops. And the higher you go, pushing that hard doesn't really give that much more of a benefit. He said before that the item drop rarity increases. Yes, it does. But the percentage will be so low at high corruption. And there's almost no point in doing that. Is Wazzy coming in? Um, I don't know if we ever actually settled on that or not. Uh... I, I know it's not available for 1.1, I can tell you that much. Um, you know, if, if we can if we can find the time to add it, I think it would be a good thing. It's it's a pretty significant addition. This is this is another one of those things I was talking about earlier about like, oh. Okay, I don't know why it's lagging here. Twitch, thank you for nothing. Um, he, he just keeps saying that it's not as easy to implement as people think it is. And it's not coming with 1.1. And I think... In a past stream, he said that they are planning on it. So, um, because he didn't know what they actually decided then. I mean, they kind of have to, right? Path of Exile 2 will be doing it. Um, and this game could also gain a lot from it, especially like <clears throat> because there's a bunch of kiting builds, right? If you have a Fireball Sorcerer or the Rogue, the Marksman Rogue, uh, Vasdi would be so great for these builds and would bring a lot to the game. So, I'm sure they'll bring it. Not with the next patch, sadly. But it will come, I'm pretty sure. Uh, any plans to rework, update some of the older classes, passives, tree to be up to par with the new classes? Warlock Falconer. Warlock has like every node with a rank 5 bonus passive with class like Shaman who have very few. 
Yeah, we are we are um, updating the passive trees for every every mastery um, slowly over time. It's not a um, uh, <laughs> like a a complete top to bottom rework of every one of them or anything like that. But there are changes all over the place, and we are slowly adding in more of those threshold nodes to trees as we as we see fit for them. He mentioned the threshold nodes there, and um, what he actually refers to is because the Warlock, for example, has a bunch of nodes that say if you have, or for each point of uncapped necrotic resistance, you gain, I don't know how many fucking um, percentage in extra damage on your torment, for example. So these sort of single nodes on your passive tree that create an entire build around it, right, also with the cold resistance, with the um, chaos bolts. Um, so this alone makes its own build, and of course it gives a lot of variety to, to builds and classes and masteries. And of course, you have to think about it this way, the game has been in development for five years. Warlock and Falconer were the last two new classes, and one of the oldest classes obviously are lacking behind in cool skills and even visuals for the skills and passive three thingies. Like the Shaman, for example, is an example, or the Lich also is very old. So these obviously lag behind. Um, and I think the question, while understandable, is sort of self-evident. Of course, they will be updating this. And of course, they will be adding new things to the existing classes. And of course, they will be adding new cool passives. But still, it's a good re uh, reaffirmation to hear it from Mike themselves. Um, he also said in the last stream, I believe that there are some interactions that are coming with 1.1, even though they said there will be no new skills, no new skills and no new passives, but they might change the passives up a little bit. So maybe some passive node for Shaman might get a threshold thingy or whatever. Um, that helps a lot. No shit, it's a ring. Yeah, this is uh, one of the leaks, one of the, I guess, a unique coming. Um, Aaron already talked about this. It looks a lot like a Forge God ring, to be honest, with like the, the health symbol and the colors. Um, looks a lot like and unique for the Forge Guard, so not for me, sadly. I'm not the Forge Guard fanboy, sorry. Um, but for you Forge Guard players out there, there is apparently something coming. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, there is another leak. There was... Down here. Uh, I don't know why it's uh, not running again. Twitch is being an ass this morning. This will be spinning in a second. There we go. Uh, something freezer. I guess this is an enemy. Uh, bovine type level, perhaps. <laughs> it's a new type uh, of enemy, I uh, guess. I don't know why. Are... I don't know why <laughs> my Twitch player is fucking up. Uh, looks like an enemy, I would say. You you fight. I saw some vaxy thing. I don't know what this could be, because there's no new areas coming right with 1.1, so this must be in some existing ones. Maybe in the desert. I don't know. Uh, weird question, how does the team deal with the slow decline of a cycle? All seasonal games have this huge influx of gamers at the start, then a slow decline. Uh, is this nerve-wracking for devs, and how do you feel you will judge the success or failure of a cycle? Um, there, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have any impact on me whatsoever until people start, you know, like, you, you see the posts of, of, that, that, that come out it's like oh game's dead that's lost 90 percent of the player base whatever all that sort of stuff uh, those those posts are a little disheartening um because you're like what if someone believes them um and it's like it's fine if one person doesn't understand it but like if if they manage to convince someone else by speaking really confidently um you know th then it's a little frustrating um, but like, it's doing exactly what we expected it to do. Like, exactly what we expected it to do. So I'm, I'm, I'm not concerned. There's, there's no danger to the studio's longevity. Um, you know, I, I, we're gonna keep making the game. I think it's an awesome game. I think people are gonna come back and play season two, cycle two. Sorry. Um. And I think that people will, um, like, the, the player count will drop off again, and 
you know, they'll go play something else. And, and uh, I mean, if we're doing our job well and uh, the stuff we're making is fun, they'll be back for cycle three. Um, and that's great. Um, yeah, first of all, I always call it seasons. I know it's just the, the regular thing, right? But they went with cycle, but it's so hard to, to remember cycle. But anyway, it's seasons for me as well. So yeah, the, he was pretty much referring to Riker's video there, wasn't he? Um, and this is something I've said many times before. You know what Spider-Man said, right? With great power comes great responsibility. And if you're a big influencer, or if you have a huge following online, then you got to be careful what you put out because people will believe you. And they will sometimes even believe you without fact-checking. Or even to just watch the first five seconds of five minutes of your video. And if you have the conclusion at the end of it, then they just leave. And they have this wrong perception of what you said. Right? I think Ryan could change his title. In the meantime, he might even have deleted the video. I'm not sure. Um, but this was definitely... He got a lot of flag for it, and rightly so. Because he was basically shitting on Last Epoch in... Like, it was a click by title, shitting on Last Epoch, then reverting everything that is in the title and in the thumbnail in the video only for an ad for the rest of the wicked. I understand it from a business perspective because obviously the rage bait kind of thing gains a lot of engagement and you make a lot of money that way. But you kind of have to ask yourself if that is worth alienating your fan, ba fan base or even. Not destroying, but ruining the game for some people who actually believe what you said there without watching the entire video, just for the, the money. Maybe he needs it. I don't know. It, for me, it seemed a bit... It seemed a bit weird. And he has been called out by most people, even his friends like Aaron, for example, also called him out on it. So I don't want to go too deep into this thing, but you see this every time, right? There's always these kind of players that come on. And the game is dead. And this is what most people usually talk about when the, the player rates drop a lot, even though it's completely normal for any ARPG. It's the same happening with Path of Exile. And even each season this happens, not to the extent maybe with um, Last Epoch, even though it had actually quite a good retention of people, but it happens every time with Diablo also. This is normal, completely normal. Hundreds, if not 200,000 of people will be coming back with 1.1 once it launches. They will be back, play the new content, and then they will leave again. That's how these games operate. That's just how it is. Now, Riker actually, in his video, I gotta give him credit there, he was sort of pointing out why ARPGs are like that, and what's actually the reason for that, and if this is good long-term for these games. So he does have a point, because obviously for the devs, I don't know if this is great, <laughs> that um, they have a lot of... The, like they have to make new content consistently all the time, otherwise the game does die out. It's just the nature of these kind of games these days. Um, we can have a discussion about it, but the, the way he phrased it, um, the title was literally "What Happened to Last Epoch," sort of implying that it's dead, and um, yeah, that that sort of gave a, a foul stench into this whole thing, especially in, with big influencers doing this or big creators. So this is why I always say you have to be careful what you put out um, because you will be influencing people with that. Good to hear, though, that Mike and EHG is totally fine. This is exactly as expected. They did expect exactly these player drops. This is completely normal. Everything's fine. All is good. The game is not that. It's exactly working as intended. We can all keep playing. And in two months, oh, one month, rather, roughly, uh, one and a half months, a lot of people will be coming back and play all the new stuff and then they will go again and play something else that's just how it is and that's fine all right let me know in the comments what you think of it that was it for this one there's a bunch of other things in here as well in this stream you can you can check it out of course on twitch.tv slash last epoch game this is where he streams you find all the stuff there there's also um something about no new skills coming, meme levels like call levels, a skill-specific stats display on the on the C1, the character display, um, new NPCs in the Echo of the World after the Echoes, 
on and if anything everything goes to legacy always or does it stay inside etc so if you want to watch these things i didn't put it in this video because it gets too long but check out the stream and i will see you next week with the next stream until then have a good time with a game that is not that